Hello there, and in this video we're going to introduce the idea of fractional calculus and what it means to be a fractional derivative. Uh, most of these videos in the beginning of the series is going to be mainly focused on the theoretical context and we can look into applications at a later time. Uh, but first we need to understand how to calculate a fractional derivative, um, what it is, and then we can apply it in the future. Alright, so uh, before we proceed, uh, let's make sure that we know some basic things about uh, differential calculus, uh, the ordinary perspective. Uh, so recall that the first derivative of a function, uh, let's use an example, say x to the fifth. Uh, so remember that this is an example of the power rule. Uh, so we can say that this is going to be equal to 5x to the fourth, right? Uh, and we can also consider the second derivative uh, with respect to x of x to the fifth, and that's going to be equal to, so we bring down the fourth, so that becomes 20, and then we subtract the exponent by 1, so we get x cubed. Uh, we can also talk about the zeroth derivative of a function, uh, x to the fifth, which is going to leave the function in place as well, so that's just going to be x to the fifth. Uh, so uh, one of the starting questions that one may ask is, okay, we have these orders of derivatives 1, 2, and 0, uh, but is it possible that these numbers can be fractions? or something else like decimals or square roots or pies or e's or something like that. And that's pretty much the starting motivational question of fractional calculus. All right, so uh, let's address that question. Uh, so why not consider the, say, half derivative of x to the fifth? All right, so if we want to consider the half derivative, that means we have to have some pattern to extend uh, to say the set of complex numbers past the set of natural numbers, right? Uh, so as a guide and example, uh, let us consider the general power rule. So remember the derivative of x to the n is going to be equal to n times x to the m minus one. Uh, and the second derivative with respect to x of x to the n. So we're going to bring our n minus 1 down and subtract the exponent by 1. And the third derivative of x to the n is going to be n times m minus 1 times m minus 2 times x to the n minus 3. Uh, so let's see if we can get sort of a pattern here. So if you look at this leading coefficient, uh, that's pretty much like a factorial except we're missing some pieces uh, down the line, right? Uh, so we can rewrite this as n times m minus 1 times m minus 2 times x to the m minus 3, and we're going to input some terms here. Uh, so we're going to do m minus 3 times m minus 4 all the way down to 1. Uh, and if we multiply top by that term, then that's going to give us n minus 3 times m minus 4 all the way down to 1. So we're just multiplying top and bottom of this equation by 1 so we can get sort of a factorial representation here. Uh, okay, so what does that mean? So the third derivative of x to the n is going to be equal to, so the numerator of this fraction is going to be n factorial, and the bottom of this fraction is going to be n minus 3, the quantity factorial, times x to the n minus 3. Uh, so now once we have this general expression for the third derivative of x to the n, we should be able to jump to the main picture. Uh, so let's assume we want to consider the kth derivative of x to the m. So everywhere we see 3, we're going to replace that by k. Uh, so that's going to be equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times x to the n minus k. And that's going to give you the kth derivative of any uh, polynomial or power function uh, x to the m. All right, so we're trying to ask ourselves is, you know, is it possible that k can be any real number? And also keep in mind that the power rule n, n is also a true real number as well. Uh, so if k and n are real numbers, then that means, well, we can always subtract two real numbers and get real numbers back. Uh, but the, you know, the consideration needs to be looked at uh, in this leading coefficient term. Uh, so recall, or maybe you might not be familiar with this, recall that the factorial k 
can be extended to be equal to the gamma function at n plus 1. Uh, so remember the gamma function, gamma n plus 1, this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, x to the n times e to the minus x dx. So that's the gamma function. It's an extension of the factorial. Uh, so you can talk about like one half factorial, one third factorial, and what those would be extended to be equal to. All right, so if we sort of assume this identity to be true here, uh, so we can rewrite the factorial expressions in terms of gamma. Uh, so that means the kth derivative of x to the m is going to be equal to, so n factorial is going to be replaced with gamma m plus 1 all over, and n is going to be shifted again by 1, so we get m plus 1 minus k factorial times x to the n minus k. So by induction, we have that the extension of the power rule uh, to real numbers k and m is given by this expression here. All right, well, that's cool. Uh, so let's do an example to sort of see how uh, this would work out. And we'll do some more examples uh, in the upcoming video. So let us assume we're interested in finding the half derivative of x to the fifth. All right, so again, uh, this is going to be equal to uh, gamma 5 plus 1 over gamma 5 plus 1 minus the order of the derivative for which we're considering times x to the original order minus the derivatives that we're taking off. So in a sense, this is our answer, right? So let's do some simplification here. Uh, so the half derivative of x to the fifth is going to be equal to gamma 6 over, so we get 5 plus 1, that's going to be 6. 6 minus 1 half is going to be 5.5. So that's going to be gamma of 11 over 2 times gamma, so 5 minus 1 half is going to be 4.5, so that's going to be x to the 9 halves. Okay, uh, so gamma of 6 is the same as 5 factorial, so 5 factorial we know is already 720. Uh, and gamma 11 over 2, so remember all the half uh, values of gamma can be found analytically. We already know this value. Uh, so one can show that gamma of 11 halves is the same as 945 root pi divided by 32. Uh, times x to the 9 halves. And if you don't know these exact values, you know, it's perfectly fine uh, to accept this as your final answer because you can do a numerical calculator to calculate these values of gamma up to whatever decimal value approximation that you are needed. Uh, so once we do some fraction manipulations here, we have that the half derivative of x to the fifth is going to be equal to uh, once you simplify, it's going to be 512 over 21 squared to, squared to pi uh, times x to the 9 has power. Uh, so this is the half derivative of x to the fifth. Uh, so that's pretty much how you can calculate a fractional derivative of a power at least. Uh, so the formula that we've pretty much you know introduced here to sort of motivate this idea is the kth derivative of x to the m is equal to gamma m plus 1 divided by gamma m plus 1 minus k times x to the n minus k. And this is what we refer to as the uh, power rule for fractional derivatives. And when I say fractional derivatives, we're talking about uh, k being a real integer. Now, there are some uh, catches to this. For example, you know, uh, negative derivatives, whatever they, they mean. Uh, and you may guess that negative derivatives might be integrals, uh, which is a actually decent good guess. Uh, but how to solidify that operator uh, needs a bit of attention. Uh, but we'll get to there eventually. Uh, but in the upcoming video, we're going to do a couple more examples of the power rule. Uh, for fractional derivatives and also talk about a couple consequences of that.